Welcome to the County of Barnstable Formal Site Plan Review. Um, today is November 2nd, 2023. I'm Jeff Carter. I'm going to be chairing this meeting today. Please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast on the Town of Barnstable's Government Access Channel. The purpose of Site Plan Review is to ensure that all government activities regulated by the Town are completed in accordance to federal, state, and local regulations. To that end, this meeting will bring the town's regulatory agencies together in one place. So you do not have to go from department to department to, in order to try to understand what is required of you to obtain a permit. And just a note to the public, uh, both of these cases today have um, come through our informal site plan review process. Uh, the way this process will work is Maggie will read a case into the record. The applicant will then have an opportunity to give us a brief presentation. Uh, from there, I will bring it to staff for comment and questions to the applicant. Uh, it would be helpful if you could just mute your microphone when it's not your turn to speak and uh, state your name uh, for the record when it is your turn to speak. Um, Maggie uh, will be taking notes of this meeting and she will provide you a, a letter of uh, from the formal site plan review committee. Um, with all that being said, Maggie, do you want to read the first case into the record? Sure. Our first case today is Site Plan Review 23-91, 19-verse Road, LLC, represented by attorneys Mike and Jeffrey Ford. The address is 19-verse Road in Hyannis, map parcel 310-288. The zoning is in the RB as well as the GP overlay. The applicants proposed the demolition of two existing residential houses and construction of eight residential townhouse unit in four buildings of two units each, along with associated access driveway parking, landscaping, stormwater facilities, and utility infrastructure. Previous site plan review application 23-42 was for two buildings. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, Attorney Ford, would you like to? Yes, uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Carter, uh, members of the Site Plan Review Committee. Uh, Mike Ford, along with Jeff uh, Ford, we here representing um, the applicant, 19 and 29 Beers Road LLCs. Um, the owner of the LLCs is Mr. Joe Laham. He's also uh, on the line. And on the line as well, Mr. Carter, is uh, Josh Eden from Atlantic Design. Um, Atlantic has done the site plan work for uh, the applicant. As Maggie indicated, um, this project uh, uh, has evolved uh, through site plan review. It was initially proposed um, as it was initially proposed, excuse me, as uh, eight units in, in two buildings, and it now is uh, has a um, a look of, of smaller buildings with uh, four buildings with uh, two units in each. So basically uh, two, uh, excuse me, four, two family dwellings uh, are now proposed on the site. All the units are proposed to be three bedrooms. The background here is that the applicant, Mr. Laham, um, owns a number of businesses in the town of, of, of Barstable and specifically within the village of Hyannis and uh, has in, in, in over 150 employees. Uh, one of his establishments is the abutting property uh, to this site, um, the Audi dealership. And like any large employer on the Cape or small employer, frankly, for that matter, um, workforce housing is, a, is the number one issue uh, in trying to keep good employees. And so uh, Mr. Laham bought these two single family homes uh, when he redeveloped the Audi site. And he did so for the purpose of, of providing um, uh, housing to employees, and uh, they have been um, utilized in that fashion uh, since he's purchased them. Uh, given the demand for housing and the um, inability to, frankly, keep uh, full-time employees, Mr. Laham is seeking to increase the density on this site uh, to four um, two-family units for a total of eight. Uh, and uh, the plan is, and the proposed condition for these units in the event that they go forward, is that they would be restricted as rentals uh, for workforce housing for employees um, of Mr. Laham's businesses. Um, it being in the RB zone, Mr. Carter, uh, uh, the use is not allowed. 
uh, multifamily uh, on this site is not allowed. So we have applied uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for uh, principally a use variance um, under Section 240.11 uh, uh, from the RB um, use standards. And we've also applied to the extent necessary for a variety of uh, bulk and dimensional variance requirements uh, from both that section and the GP overlay section. Um, we've been through uh, the informal site plan review process and there were a number of comments. Uh, the first round of comments came um, as uh, Ms. Flynn indicated when this project was proposed for two buildings. And then we've had a further um, informal site plan review uh, with the four building um, uh, plan. Uh, we believe that we've uh, responded to all of those. Most recently in our informal last week, uh, there were still a couple of things that staff was looking for uh, for the purposes of, of proceeding at this formal hearing. One was the um, uh, stormwater. They still needed the 25 year uh, stormwater analysis. I believe that was done. Um, and also there were other some other comments from DPW, all of which uh, have been addressed by Atlantic and revised plans have been submitted uh, to the engineering department uh, before today on those issues. The other issues that were still um, uh, outstanding uh, as of uh, the informal, Mr. Carter, were one, a comment from the fire department uh, as to whether the buildings would be sprinkled. And we indicated that they were not proposed to be sprinkled. Um, and uh, the fire department raised the issue that uh, we needed to make sure that we had the uh, required separation between the buildings, the two outbuildings, um, so as to comply with the uh, standards for sprinkling. Um, that is five feet, and uh, we had we were planning on the five feet from foundation to foundation. And the fire department correctly pointed out you have to you have to take your measurements from overhangs. And so we're in the process of looking architecturally at the buildings, and there'll be an adjustment on the overhangs. But um, the final architectural plans will address that when we apply for a building permit and provide the necessary uh, separation distance. And that's how uh, we propose to proceed with that. Finally, um, I had indicated that I would try to get by today um, some draft language um, for restricting these units. Um, we'll be offering um, this proposal as a condition um, to the Board of Appeals for any variance that um, they see fit to grant after our hearing next Thursday night. Um, it's a short one. I'll just read it into the record since this is a public hearing. Uh, or a public meeting, I should say, not a hearing. The proposed condition for ZBA is that the eight uh, dwelling units shall be restricted to use for workforce rental housing for employees and their families of the property owner's businesses located in Barnstable. The property owner shall annually file an affidavit with the building department evidencing compliance with this condition. Further, the property owner shall notify the building department in writing within 30 days of any conveyance or transfer of title of the property which notice shall include a copy of the deed of any such transfer. One of the questions that Commissioner Florence raised last time, Mr. Carter, was what happens if Mr. Laham decides to uh, sell all his businesses and uh, uh, start spending time on a beach in Hawaii? And uh, the first response to that is that I think Mr. Laham prefers Florida rather than Hawaii, but be that as it may, um, we've drafted this so that it runs with the land and uh, any subsequent owner of this uh, uh, property would be required to rent these units solely uh, to the employees of their business. And that's the way it's been drafted. So I did send a copy uh, yesterday uh, to Maggie as well for the site plan record. And I sent a copy to Planning and Development. Uh, and I sent a copy to Anna Brigham at the Zoning Board of Appeals. And um, I think it's a, a proposed condition, uh, frankly, um, uh, as a draft, and we're welcome to hear comments um, from planning and development or site plan today. It may be given the fact that people just got that, that we don't get those comments until um, our zoning hearing uh, next Thursday, but comments are welcome, Mr. Carter. So that's our presentation. Josh is here, and 
if you want him to go through any of the specifics of the comments last time, we can. Uh, but it may be more constructive uh, to go through with your staff and we respond to whatever uh, is still outstanding. Yeah, sounds good. Why don't we just bring it right to staff? I'd like to start with uh, DPW Engineering. They had the most uh, outstanding comments from the informal meeting. Happy to do that. Uh, Matt Robel, DPW Engineering. Um, I did get that updated stormwater submission from Josh on Monday afternoon, I believe. I have gone through uh, his revised submission and I've only really got two remaining comments. Uh, the first of which has to do with the stormwater, uh, the dry well that's proposed between the two structures, uh, the one that takes care of the mid flow, uh, the middle of the roof flow for each one of the uh, two buildings. Uh, based off of the 25 year storm calculation, we're exceeding uh, the storage volume within that pit by about three quarters of a foot or so. So we're looking to have that structure appropriately upsized uh, to capture and infiltrate all that storm water. It looked like everything else provided in the 25 year calculation uh, should be sufficient. So that was my only re uh, remaining comment on that. And then um, I have one other one about a uh, extension of the sleeving to be five feet beyond the existing stub. On sewer manhole two, it looks like that was addressed, but on sewer manhole one, I'm just looking to have the same note carried over there. Um, those are my only outstanding comments, and it looks like they've addressed everything else. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Hannes Fire, please. Good morning, Captain Tim Landon for Hannes Fire. Um, <clears throat> thanks for uh, addressing some of the concerns about the spacing of the buildings on that. Um, it primarily falls on the building code, but we work hand in hand with building and that sort of thing. Um, essentially, just for uh, for the record, um, we want to make sure that fire protection is included in construction control documents. And as the project moves forward, uh, we'll look for NFPA 241 compliance with both demolition and construction of what's planned. Other than that, uh, nothing new from high-ass fire. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Tim. I think as the these uh, buildings are being proposed and the size of them, I'm not sure if it's going to fall under construction control, but they're going to have to provide those documentation as, as part of the building permit process anyways. And while we're on that, it just um, would recommend you working with uh, an architect or, and uh, a registered design professional on that. And site um, fire separation distance is, is really measured from an imaginary line between the two buildings, not from building to building. So we want to be careful that we, we have the right uh, fire rate of construction for those units. Okay. Um, planning and development. Thank you, Jeff Kate Maldonado, funding and development. My comment is consistent with what's been um, discussed thus far that the applicant is aware that they need to seek and have sought relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals for the use variance and associated bulk uh, regulations. And we did receive the condition. I don't have any comments on that, but I have distributed it to my team. Thank you. That's good. Um, health division. Thank you, Jeff. David Stan with Health. Um, the rental units will need to be registered with the Health Division. And there was a question about the dumpster. I'm not sure if that's going to resolve, but about just adding that to the site plan if they're going to have one. And that's all. Thank you. Thanks, David. Uh, licensing? Thank you, Jeff. Aaron Logan, licensing. Um, there are no licensing requirements for this application. Thank you, Aaron. Next up, management. Thank you, Jeff. Grace Rogers, Asset Management. No requirements at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. I think that's all the staff comments. I um, We did receive the proposed conditions. I would just ask you before you go to uh, the ZBA hearing next Thursday, just reach out to Commissioner Florence and just uh, kind of look at the language there. I think there, there might be uh, some language that we might want to uh, modify in that. So. Um, Absolutely, look forward to that. Is he back on on the seventh? Is that his his return date? Uh, is that Tuesday? I believe so. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Does anyone see a reason why this cannot proceed to uh, the next stage of permitting, which is EBA? Not seeing any uh, objections. Um, you guys can uh, proceed. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Carter, and members of the committee. Have a great day. Thanks for the presentation. <clears throat> okay, our next and last application today is Site Plan Review 23-59 for E.M. Crosby Boat Works Incorporated. Um, I believe we're being represented today by attorney Mark Boudreau. The address is 140 Osterville West Barnstable Road in Osterville, map parcel 120-051-002. The zoning is uh, RC as well as the WP overlay. The applicant proposes to build a structure like a greenhouse for bo boat storage. An existing greenhouse structure on the property will be used as well. There. The applicant is requesting to store approximately 60 boats with a maximum of 20 motorboats. All right, Attorney Boudreau. Yes, sir. good morning. For the record, Mark Boudreau, I'm here with Ned Crosby um, on behalf of the applicant. A little bit of um, housekeeping. The uh, application um, for a special permit to change a pre-existing non-conforming use was allowed at the ZBA meeting last week, and it was allowed for 75 boats, uh, not for 20. Um, and there were no uh, restrictions on what kind of boats would be put in there. Uh, at this point, we're looking to most likely have about half of the boats being sailboats and most of the remaining boats uh, being smaller motorboats, um, the longest probably being in the 30 to 35 foot range. There is a proposed greenhouse, which would be uh, the storage of six of the 75 boats only. I had the pleasure of uh, working with and meeting um, Pat Hill from Santa Velocity Marsons Mills and we went over the various uh, concerns and requirements that uh, would be applicable to a use such as this. And um, if I could, I'd like to go over uh, each one of these and, and how they're being addressed. The property itself um, is a dog leg property off of Osterville, West Barnstable Road. Uh, there would be a gate um, uh, shortly after uh, uh, driving onto the site that would be locked and the fire department would be provided a commercial lockbox. The driveway itself would allow up to a 48 foot uh, fire truck to do essentially a three point turn um, to get in and then to be able to safely get out. The largest truck currently uh, with um, COM is uh, 40 and a half feet. In terms of the coverage, uh, there needs to be um, no uh, more than 150 feet of space so that uh, if a fire truck needed to get in there and um, um, apply water to put out any sort of fire, they need to get within 150 feet. And that, that is not a, a problem. Uh, we, we were able to measure that out. In terms of water pressure, there is a fire hydrant on Osville West Barnstable Road, pretty much across from the driveway. And that would provide uh, adequate um, force to pressure to uh, allow uh, any sort of a fire to be addressed. Uh, we are aware that the um, address of the property needs to be prominently displayed, as well as the cell phone number for uh, Mr. Crosby, who will be the emergency 24 hours a day, seven days a week contact um, in case there is a problem. The small boats will be drained of all fuel. Um, obviously, you know, the sailboats will have very little fuel as well. And there will be a handful of boats that would have uh, indoor storage tanks uh, upwards of approximately 100 gallons. Uh, the um, property uh, is going to be accessed uh, 24-7. Uh, however, there is a um, an agreement with the neighbors that they're going to keep the volume of traffic down um, and the noise down. And at that point, I think I'd uh, answer any questions that site plan review uh, members may have. Before uh, I bring it to staff, excuse me, just 
A quick question about the greenhouse storage. Um, is that just specifically for sailboats? Is it motorboats? And how many specifically are going to be inside and how many outside? You know, that, um, or I can answer that, Mark. Um, that is indoor storage for Wiano Senior sailboats. Um, and those are 25 feet long, so we can get three side by sides, two rows of them. And um, a lot of them are, well, a handful of them are wooden still and that don't like to be shrink wrapped. So this is a way of um, providing indoor storage in a more favorable in more favorable conditions, I guess. Um, so that's, there would be six Wiano seniors in that structure. Okay, and both greenhouse structures or is one not for storage? Yeah, the existing one, um, we're going to fill with spars, uh, masts, and booms from the seniors. We probably have 15 seniors that will be on site. The others will be out um, in the lot. And so all those masts, which are all varnished and stuff, those will go in that other greenhouse. Okay, thank you. Sure. We'll bring it to staff. Um, Tom Fire, please. Yes, hi, good morning. Um, as Mark said, we spoke yesterday um, and we touched on a number of these subjects. Um, from a site plan point of view, um, Mark kind of went over everything that we discussed. I do have some additional questions when it comes to the greenhouse storage. Um, basically, it's for intended use. So are we describing this more as boat storage or a boat yard? Um, I know I had asked Mark yesterday, are we, are we proposing any type of rack storage or is this kind of single boat storage? And is this structure, um, is it an all weather structure? Is it gonna be heated? Is it gonna be enclosed on all four sides? Um, any information you can provide? Well, I can um, report that there will be no rack storage. Uh, and Ned, do you wanna jump in? Sure, and the uh, greenhouse will be enclosed um, four sides and there will be no heat, uh, no work done inside it. It'll, um, it will have a white, uh, membrane on it as opposed to a clear greenhouse uh, covering because we aren't looking for the heat or uh, that much intense heat. So it's um, uh, but purely uh, closed, uh, weather tight, but uh, no heat or anything like that inside. And Ned, do you happen to know the size of those greenhouses? I do. It's um, the one that we'll be constructing is 30 feet by 60 feet. And um, the one on the property, um, I probably can't read that. It's approximately the same size. This one is maybe yeah, so the, seven by. Oh, that's that's the garage of, of this one. Here. That one there. So I would say it's um, twenty by forty, maybe. Okay. The existing one. Okay, and we can deal with a lot of the other stuff with that in the permitting stage. I know this is just site plan review, um, so that'll still have to go through the permitting stage as well. Um, back to site plan, um, hydrant location we approved, uh, fire department access we spoke about, and I also provided a spec sheet um, for Mark that he can give to engineers um, that just has the specs of our largest apparatus, which Mark had spoke of. Um, and then lastly, is just fuel storage. Uh, we'll need an annual permit for any fuel storage that's on that site, uh, including what may be in any vessels as well. That's all I got, Jeff. Sorry, muted. Thanks, Pat. Um, planning and development, please. Thank you, Kate Maldonado, Planning and Development. Our comment is related to the discussion had thus far, just seeking further details to finding where the boats will be stored on the site plan. And should that site plan substantially change from what was before the Zoning Board of Appeals, you may need to return um, to the ZBA. Thank you. If I could address that. Sure. So um, in speaking uh, with you, Jeff, yesterday, uh, I then followed up with Ned and I have submitted to you uh, by email a, a sketch plan. We have divided the, the two uh, sort of halves of the property, not including the access uh, driveway uh, into a Southern and a Northern portion. And it's proposed that uh, 30 boats uh, be stored on the Southern portion and 45 boats be 
uh, stored on the northern portion, the concern from uh, the building department is compliance, their ability to easily come in and be able to count the number of boats. And I, I think given the fact that there are 30 in one area and 45 in another area, and both areas are open, uh, that it, this should provide um, a mechanism to allow uh, any sort of review. And does that include the indoor storage of boats too? That does. So uh, on the 45 boats, six of those would be indoors and the remaining 39 would be out. Okay. Hey, would you, do you want to see more uh, certified plot plan showing the kind of delineation of spaces where the boats are going to be? Or? For the record, yeah, it would be nice if planning and development could see uh, the drawings that have been submitted. To review. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Uh, health, please. Thank you, Jeff. David Stan with Health. Um, the only requirement would be any uh, hazardous material stored on site would need to be registered with a health division. That's all. Thanks, Dave. Uh, licensing. Thanks, Jeff. Aaron Logan, licensing. There are no licensing requirements for this application. Thanks, um, Aaron, DBW. Matt Rubble, DBW, based off the site plan uh, submitted and previously submitted, we don't have any comments on this application. Okay, thank you, Matt. And uh, last but not least, uh, asset management. I agree, asset management, no requirements, thank you. Okay, so, um, we I think we do need a little more clarity on the site plan showing just the kind of uh, location of the boats and the intended storage. Um, are you guys planning on doing stacking the, the boats into rows or is it going to be single uh, trailer pull in storage? There'll be no stacking about half not, of the boat. Not rack stacking, but just like uh, trailers in front of other trailers. Uh, yes. Um, you know, we'd ideally will access, you know, we won't block too many boats in just, um, from a logistical standpoint, but the boats will range in size from, you know, 12 feet to 30 feet. So it's, uh, it'll be a little, uh, puzzle-ish, you know, as we just kind of conveniently and effectively back them in there. Okay. Um, Kate, would you be opposed to a conditional approval um, provided that they provide us a site plan uh, showing us uh, the location of the storage, breaking out the numbers, and now they're going to be stored? That's fine with me. Okay. Um, so we can uh, we can move forward to the next step. If we could just provide us a more certified plot plan, just uh, showing us exactly where those boats are going to be stored on the property. A little more formally than uh, than the email from yesterday. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll move forward with the conditional approval today. And if you could present that to us for both planning and and the building department's approval. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys early morning meeting. I know we had a couple different links there. So thanks for everyone jumping on and, uh, and all the work you put in. Jeff, can I ask one last question? Yes. Um, um, I know we just talked about stacking the boats, not racks, not rack storage, but stacking them uh, back to yeah. back and what so. Yeah. Um, will, will there be a way to maneuver those boats around at all times, um, whether it be a truck on location or something that can move, um, as you described, like a puzzle piece um, will there be a way to move those at all times on location? Absolutely. There'll be a small tractor on site. Okay. Uh, and Pat, they did submit a plan yesterday showing just a template of the, uh, I think it's a 48.5 truck. Um, I'm not sure if you saw that, but um, I can get that over to you. Um, okay, great. You like. Thank you. Yep, thanks. Yeah, we should make sure that that information get you can send it to me to get it uploaded into the system as well. Okay, great, very well. 
Okay, thank you guys. I'll forward this to you, Maggie, and uh, we'll see you guys all uh, next week.